Thank you for listening to the Golden Hour Drip podcast with me, Logan Lee Miller. Enjoy the show. Welcome back to the Golden Hour Drip podcast. I'm your host, Logan Lee Miller, and I have been in my sleeping in late era. I don't know why, but it has been so extremely hard to pull myself out of bed before, I don't know, 6.30, 7 o'clock, like no lie. It has been so hard. I don't know if it's like the aftermath of summertime, you know, like going through summer and having all the fun things and then like finally having a break and it's like, whoo, like I can take a deep breath, I can chill. Um, and it's just like, I need time to like rest and recuperate. But I have been like really struggling with this and I'm trying not to like beat myself up for it because I'm still being productive. I'm still getting what needs to be done, done, but I can't help but think that I'm failing in some sort of way because I'm not like having those extra hours of work time. But what has really put it in perspective for me is I'm getting the same amount of work done, if not better, like I'm being more efficient. So I'm trying, you know, a new routine out. And maybe I will go back to waking up super early because I do like the quiet time. I prefer waking up early. Like I think it is better for my overall like mood, I guess you would say. Like I, I do like that time alone um, and quiet, but I am having like such a hard time. Like I just, I can't bring myself to do it. So I've been sleeping in super late, um, or at least my standard of late, and except for Fridays. So Fridays, I have been taking an early morning class, and it is the only thing that can get me out. And I've been like thinking, oh my gosh, like I should probably like switch my afternoon workout for a morning workout to like force myself to go. But I really don't want to bring any sort of like negative feelings towards my workout class. So on Fridays, I'm able to wake up, go to my little yoga class and and get a commercial coffee. So I can purchase my coffee. It is it like gets me through the pain of waking up super early. But I don't know, like I like want to be an early morning girl. I want to wake up, but I just really like my sleep. I and I have been enjoying sleeping in. Now I'm not even like staying up later than I usually do. I'm still going to bed at like the same time. Um, but I have been working on my evening routine and like settling in to bed. So hopefully I'm storing some energy. I'm getting rested and recuperated for fall festivities, but I don't know, like summer was pretty hard. Like we did a lot of things and I have travels coming up um, for, you know, the fall. So I'm preparing myself <laughs> for all of the different activities, but I kind of, I don't know. I'm in the space of like, I don't want to beat myself up for it, but I wish I could do like a little bit better and wake up early. But then I'm like, why do I even need to wake up early? You know, like what's the point if I'm still getting the same amount of stuff done? So let's head on to our peak and our pit because I was just talking about like being productive. My peak of the week is actually like getting my, or like pre-planning my day and my week. So part of my evening routine is thinking about what I want to do um, in the upcoming day. So I am um, like scheduling out what I'm doing. I'm writing it down. I'm like, okay, these are the things that I want to get done tomorrow. And I list off like three to four things and I have to get them done. Like they're pre-planned and it takes out all of the guesswork of what am I doing? <laughs> what is my focus? Because I am a person who gets easily distracted on like what I should be working on or household chores or some of those like lower energy things that we have to do. Um, but they're like instant gratification instead of like working on those things that are, that are actually like 
needle moving activities. So let's say I have to do a task that I don't want to do at all. Um, I've been avoiding it or like putting it off because I know that it's going to take my undivided attention. I'm going to have to sit down. I'm going to have to do it. And I might just make up busyness. So then I feel good about procrastinating. Maybe you do this too, but I will like write a list or in my head, I'm like, you know what? Like, I need to do this this week, um, X, Y, Z, whatever it is. And then when it's time, it's like time to do that activity. I'm like, oh yeah, but I also need to do this thing. Oh yeah, like I, I need to like put away laundry, or I need to like pick up the bathroom, or like all these little trivial tasks that aren't like the main thing that needs to be done. Especially if I have like a deadline, I'm like, you know what? Like. I'm just going to push it off or procrastinate because I'm still doing work. I'm still getting the things done done. But what I'm not doing is like getting the main thing done. So I'm like filling up my time. Oh, I was so productive today. I did this and this and this, but I didn't like get the main thing done. And so prioritizing has been like the peak. Thinking about my day what my ugliest frog is going to be. If you've read the Brian Tracy Eat Your Frog book, you know what I'm talking about. It is so, so good. I actually listen to it on Audible. And every time I have a task that I don't want to do, I'm like, ugliest frog first, ugliest frog first. And it's so hard because I want like that quick dopamine hit. I want it to be like, oh, like I got things completed but I still kind of feel bad that I haven't like got the actual thing done that needs to be done. So I'm like, oh, like it, it's procrastination at its finest. And it's also beating yourself up <laughs> for not doing it when it's easier to just complete it. It just takes a little bit of discipline and focus, which sometimes you're lacking and it's so hard. But when I have a list of the things that I'm going to do, I'm like, okay, like we are tackling this. We are getting it done. I can't move on until I get this done. It has been game changing. I've done this for the past two weeks. I've like thought about my day, thought about the most important tasks. And if it's a task that is still important, but I need to get like the first four or five done, I will put it and plan it for a different day. So take Monday. I will put Monday, I need to get this thing done, I need to get this thing done, and that thing done. And then I think in my head, oh my gosh, like, don't forget, you need to do this too. But it's not like top priority. I will put it on Tuesday, or I'll put it on Wednesday. So when I get like the main things out of the way, I will like work on it. But that way I don't forget about it because my brain is always worried. If you don't write it down, if you don't do it right now, you're going to forget about it. So I just like mark it on my little book. I'm like Wednesday, we're going to work on this. Okay. So let's focus on the tasks and the goals for Monday and Tuesday. And then we'll be productive on that thing for Wednesday. It's been so good. I have like gotten some really hard things out of the way this week. And like things I had been dreading and just like, oh, like I don't want to do it. It's hard to take initiative on things that like you're the own boss of. Like nobody's going to get you in trouble except for like yourself. You know, it's when you're not self-regulated by someone else. It doesn't impact anybody else. Those are sometimes the hardest tasks to do because so what if I don't do it? Like. I'll just kick it down the road. No, like <laughs> I need to um, continue with like my self growth and, and nobody is going to save you. No one is going to do it for you. The only person who wants it as bad as you is you, right? Like nobody is going to force you to achieve or work on your goals, not your parents, not your spouse, not anybody like you have to do it. So yes, there's not going to be any sort of repercussions if I don't complete like the things on my personal to-do list, but you have to have that self-discipline in order to like get anything completed and done that you're going to be proud of. So it was like this double-edged sword of needing to do it, but not really having any repercussions of it. So when I write it down, it's like kind of getting myself in trouble. Like when Tuesday comes around and I'm looking at, okay, like on Sunday we wrote this list, 
why didn't you get the things done on Monday? Now you have to like stack them on Tuesday. Um, was it lack of initiative or was it like the task that you're working on is actually harder than you thought it was? Like, do I need to adjust the time that's actually going to take to complete it? So it's this very like quick self-regulation and also like a self-check. Like, am I where I'm supposed to be? Or am I falling behind? Did I miscalculate? Or have I been watching too much like Netflix or too much Hulu? Like, where have I been spending my time? And I really think this audit is so good just to like give you a little kick in the pants because it's fall. Like, there's a shorter days. Your motivation might have shortened if you're anything like me. You're feeling like, oh my gosh, like summer is finally over. I can take a break. I can take a rest. But one thing that I learned, and it was from Ed Milet, he um, is a inspirational podcaster. Um, his, I think his show is called um, The Ed, Ed Milet Show, like it's, it's his name. So I listened to his show a couple times and um, I really like him. The last or the podcast episode that I'm referring to was not, it wasn't last year. I think it's been three years now. I think I listened to it in 2020 or 2021, around that time. Um, and it was like a November podcast. And I was talking about um, the time period where people usually like take their foot off the gas pedal. Like they're no longer working on their goals. They're taking a snooze. They're having like a break because it's the holidays. And he's like, it's a holiday, not a holla month. Like the effort that you put in now, it's going to help you with your strides um, come January, February, March. You know, January rolls around and people are always like, I want to work on myself and I have all these New Year's resolutions. He's like, you would not be feeling like drowned by week two of January, right? Like that's when a lot of resolutions die. You would not be feeling this way if you had, you know, not gone so far off track in November and December with like Thanksgiving, Christmas, any of the other holidays that anybody could celebrate or being inside for winter. He says like, this is the time to push forward, like celebrate the holidays, right? But it's a holiday. You don't have to like completely throw in the towel. You don't have to like completely just like backslide into habits that are not good for you or not going to help with like your main goal. So I really took that into like took that to heart. And whenever there are times where like um, people like colleagues or people I've networked with, I'll ask them about like their holiday plans and what they're working on. And they're like, oh yeah, like. I'm taking a break. It, you know, I'll, I'll come back to that focus in the new year. Like, I feel like this time, everybody who, like, likes to lean on excuses are like, oh, yeah, like, I, um, I'll work on that in the new year. Let, let's circle back in the new year. And I don't want to do that. I want to continuously, like, stay on track and get where I need to go. So it's a holiday, it's not a whole month, and this like little check-in period is so good for me to just be like, hey, what have you been doing? <laughs> like, are you scrolling on your phone too much? So it's just been a complete game changer on actually like accomplishing and having a little like self-check. Like, what are we doing, you know? My pit of the week is my candles have started like it's not all of them okay like this one candle it's huge it's big i picked it up at marshall's you know like an impulsive purchase it smells so so good and i've been trying to work on my nighttime routine so i like light candles and i'll like start winding down i'll do my skincare and as i'm like laying in bed reading my book or writing in my journal I have the candle going. I like the ambiance. I love candles in the fall. Like candles in the spring are good too, but I rely more on my sensi than a candle in the summer. I don't know. Like I just feel like a candle almost like it, maybe it's all in my head, but I'm like, it puts off heat. Okay. And I'm trying to like cool my house. 
So I don't really use candles in the summer that often, but come fall and winter, I love lighting candles. I love having the home be all cozy, like with your things and, and definitely like a like snuggly, staying in hibernation vibe. Okay, like that is my absolute favorite. So I light the candles and I was like walking around. It's one of the big boys, okay? It is a big giant candle from Marshalls. And I was like, this will be perfect. Okay, I smelt it quickly. It smelt so good. It's like black with a wooden top on it. I was like, this is stunning. It's gonna add to all the aesthetics in my bedroom. And so I brought it home. I lit it and I was like, ah, oh, like the ambiance is so good. Um, the thing is, and I've not had a problem with this with my like other candles that I have, and I have different varieties, like different places where I've picked up candles. Um, my favorite right now is actually like uh, apple and charcoal from Bath and Body Works. It's like in this pink container. So cute, smells so good, I have it in my office. Um, and I'll like light it ever so often and then I'll blow it out. I have not had a problem with tunneling, even if I don't let it melt all the way to the outside the first time that I like light it. Some people say that you have got to allow it to melt to the ends um, before like blowing it out because candle has like candle wax has a memory and it won't burn to the outside again like you lost your chance. Well, I've lit several candles, including this huge, big, like this candle is massive. It's one of the ones with like, I think it has eight wicks in it. It's from Target. It's like a flat, big one. If you follow me on TikTok, at Logan Lee Miller, it was like the first TikTok that I um, posted after probably a year and a half hiatus, but um, it's like this massive candle. And the first time I lit it, I only lit it for like 30 minutes and that wasn't enough to burn it to the edges. Well, I lit it again and let it go for like 45 to an hour and it went ahead and melted to the edges. So like even my big candles, like I have not had this problem. And this candle that I got from Marshalls, it's like the wicks are too close together and they don't put enough flame off to melt to the sides and it has been like, the most infuriating thing. I've tried everything. I have like cut wax out. So it's like tunneled and tunneled. And I seriously think it's because the wax sticks are not, they're too close together. There's only two and it's not able to burn it all because I have like cut the wax around like a huge thick ring out of it. I've been putting that in my Scentsy because you know, like I don't want to waste it. It's so annoying. I got like probably half an inch out um, of a complete ring and the ring was like an inch wide and then half an inch deep. So that's quite a bit of wax. Um, and then I relit it and I was hopeful that it would like melt all the way. It did not. I got my hair dryer out and I was trying to like a heat gun um, and I was like trying to melt it on the sides and it has just become so infuriating. I don't know what the heck to do because I seriously think that the wax like wicks are not are not right and it just has me completely distraught. I know that's so dumb but it's annoying when you spend money on something and it doesn't like perform in the way that you want it to perform. And like, come on, like, can you just melt to the outside? That's all I'm asking, you know? It's fall, I want I want the ambiance, I want all the things, um, and my candle is just not doing it for me and it makes me so, so sad. But that has not stopped with my home curation. So I've been working on like getting things decorated and just like my fall focus. Um, I've kind of had some reflection on how I want to spend the last couple months of the year. And the last couple months for us is the fall season. December will start to cool down. Like it'll start getting like pretty cold here in like mid-Missouri, but it's really not like snowy. It won't be snowy until January probably. Hopefully we get snow on Christmas, but we probably won't. Um, and so for me, I'm like, okay, like 
it's a lot of harvest colors. It's very warm. It's very like cozy on the inside. And I've just like been thinking because it is also like warmer outside and I'm still able to do like outdoor activities and like do things. I have like completed my fall focuses. This is what I'm wanting to direct my time to because as a girl who gets distracted sometimes with doing too much and wanting to have it all, I dilute my focus. And diluted focus will not bring you the results that you want, no matter how hard you try. You can only juggle so many apples before one falls and then another falls and then you're out of your groove and you're like, what the heck is happening? Like, I want to make sure all my apples are up in the air. Did you like that reference? <laughs> I um, fall, like for me, I just processed like a bunch of apples. We went to the pumpkin patch today, like all the harvest, like it just, it is so good. And Garrett and I don't have any children, but it's like still fun for us to go um, and get in the mood and like go on a little date, like it's so fun, but like apples, pumpkins, decorating. I'm, I'm definitely like in the fall brain, okay? I had like an apple crisp um, shaken espresso today at Starbucks. That has been my go-to. I made pumpkin roll um, a couple days ago. <laughs> like I'm just like apples, pumpkins, all the things. Um, but with getting distracted, just like I did there, when you get distracted, you're not able to always like come back to what you were working on because it might be the end of the day. Or someone might ask you for something and you feel like obligated to do that thing. I, and you might think, oh my gosh, like that does not happen at all to me. That's something that you do. But for me, um, and I promise you, as soon as I say this example, you're going to think, oh, actually this does happen to me. So whenever I have like plans for the weekend, I'll have a friend text me and they'll be like, hey, um, I'm going to, you know, go to a workout class. Do you want to come? And then you're like, yeah, that sounds great. I want to go. Or your, you know, significant other might like have pop up plans and he's like hey like do you want to go out to supper or your mom might call you and say hey like um i need help with this there's all these ass like in this society like so many people like especially with our phones they want 24 hour access to you and this is not a bad thing like i love it when my you know parents text me hey like can i have help with this or you know like let's go do this if my friends text me and want to hang out like i love all those things but when do we ever like get some downtime or like time that is just strictly for ourselves because i also like when i have an opening in my schedule i'm like oh thursday i'm not doing anything i don't have a workout class i, I don't have a meeting for one of my boards like i have all my things done like I should fill it with some time and instead like you could be working on one of your main ideas your main goal and so like those distractions they're not bad distractions like i never regret hanging out with my parents i never regret going and um like hanging out with my friends but it can put like unintentional stress on yourself for the things that you should be achieving or doing you could think oh my gosh like I'm going to get this done during this pocket of time and it could be like 12 to 5, 12 to 5, 5 hours, I'm going to work on this thing, I'm going to work on this or whatever and then your friend texts you and it's like, hey, do you want to hang out at 3 o'clock? And you're like, oh yeah, like I will get 3 hours of work done, it'll be fine, like I'll get the, you know, 3 to 5 after we hang out. But really, you have to um, go hang out with them. You have to prepare, you have to get ready, you, have, you might have to change your clothes. And then that is um, cutting time out of the, the like focus that you were gonna do or whatever you're gonna work on. So I think just like taking a second to align yourself and think about what you really want and think about like how you want the rest of your year to go. I have been journaling before bed and just kind of like writing out things that I've been reading like certain books and they have like prompts in them. And they're like, oh, like 
if you could achieve anything without disappointing someone, like what would you achieve? You know, it, it's something like that where it's asking you questions about whatever is holding you back, whatever, you know, barrier you need to get through. It's like, what would you do? And it's really opening up my eyes to all the things that I want to do and the things that like I'm allowing fear or imposter syndrome or anything holding me back. And I'm like, why can't I do this? Or any of my long-term goals. Like they say you overestimate what you can get done in a year. I'm sorry. You underestimate, that was backwards. You underestimate what you can achieve in a year, but overestimate what you can achieve in five, 10 years. Um, so they always say like, oh, if you like set your goals out for the year, you can actually like achieve more than you actually think. But it's when you're like, oh, well in three years I'll achieve this, but you never work towards it. Then you're like overestimating where you'll be or how your life will look in three years because you're not putting in the daily work. You're not putting it in day to day, week by week, month by month. Like your um, short term goals, say short term being a year, you are going to think, oh, like oh, this one thing is going to take so much time. It's not going to allow me to like add other um, priorities in, but then like in three years time or five years time, you're like, I'm going to have a six pack and I'm going to have three houses and I'm going to rip two of them out. And I am going to like, you have all these expectations, but like the work that you're putting in, it's not aligning. <laughs> so I'm just like taking it in perspective of, okay, like if I want to do this, um, can I shorten the time? Can I cut it down in six months? Can I cut it down in three months? Or I ask myself the question of, okay, this is what you want to do. This is what you want to achieve in a year. What would it take to get it done in half the time, like six months? Or what would it take to get it done in three months? You know, like having that perspective of where have I been like a time suck? Like where have I been spending my focus that isn't serving me in a way that is going to like propel me towards my goals. And I know you might think that sounds crazy because we're allowed to have times of break. We're allowed to, you know, not work on anything and just be present. And that's perfectly fine. Like I also like to have those off times. I don't want to be on all the time. I do want to have like breaks in my day or weekends where I don't do anything at all. That's good for your per like productivity as well. You have to sometimes like pull the rubber band back before your pencil eraser is launched, right? Like you have to like slow down, pull back in order to like move forward. So I totally get like taking a break or resting. Like those are so important for your productivity as well. And I'm not saying like you can't watch Netflix or if you have a budget and you're like focused on saving money that you can't like run to Starbucks. It's just taking inventory of these things and seeing where you can improve if you want to improve in that area. You can't improve in all the areas. <laughs> like you can only work on one thing at a time or a handful of times because like I said, diluted focus is going <laughs> to result in diluted efforts. So you won't be able to achieve everything if you're trying to do everything. You have to like be very picky with your time. We only get 24 hours in a day and then it's the next day. It's what you do with those 24 hours that are going to propel you forward or to get you where you want to go. So I'm not saying like you have to work all the time. I'm just saying like when I'm on, I'm on and I'm working. But if it's like a break time, like if I'm not going to be working, I'm not going to be working. I'm going to be enjoying it because I have troubles with rest. So I'm like, where can I be the most efficient with my time? And then where can I pull back? Like, where can I actually like not do anything <laughs> because I've been productive and I got like my achievement done in a shorter amount of time.
So I've decided that I'm going to be focusing in three areas, just three areas, because I feel like any more would be super, super overwhelming, but also because, I mean, I don't want to move on to anything else before I get these perfect. If you've ever read the book Atomic Habits, you know the like um, uh, theme terminology um, where he says, you know what, like you can work on something for X amount of days. It's not you will have a habit by 30 days or, or whatever the saying is, like if you have a habit for so many days, then it's a habit. He says like a habit is as many days as it takes for it to like sink into your brain as a habit. But once you do have that habit, then you can stack upon something else. So if you get 1% better every single day, by the end of the year, you will have be like X amount more productive or better or whatever. But if you remain the same, you actually like have a decrease in your effectancy. So I was like, you know what, that is, that is pretty good knowledge. So. I want to focus on these three things, have them as building blocks to then like my goals in January, you know, like uh, it's the thing that Ed Milet said, whenever people are like cooling it or taking a chill for <laughs> the holidays or the weekend or, you know, any of these, and it doesn't always have to be like winter time. It could be spring bank break it could be summer. It could be any of these things that like people use as an excuse to like take it easy. And while I think, you know what, like there are times where I do want to take it easy. I want to have taken it easy because I've like achieved something and like now it's the time for rest. Um, I don't believe in periods of just like go, 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 go. Like you can't do that 24 hours a day, seven times a week, like year after year. Like you do have to have that um, restoration, you have to have that time to think, but I do believe in, okay, like this amount of time, I'm going to have to work really hard. I might have less boundaries around like self care, you know, like I might be working later or having to wake up earlier and like put more time in and not have as much like fun time. Like I get that. Like I am totally cool with having sections of my time or my life doing this. But then like there's also times where I do want to like take a break and cool it. But even when I am like taking a break from my habits, my goals or like my um, overall like well-being, like I don't necessarily like to drink that much. But like on the day that I do have half a bottle of wine, like that's okay. <laughs> like It doesn't fit with my overall goal of being like healthy or whatever. But it's okay. Like one day is, it's going to be okay. So my focuses for fall, um, are three categories. First category is health and fitness. I, this is my least favorite goal. Okay. I hate watching what I have to eat. I hate exercising. I just told you that I am struggling so hard with like waking up early. And I feel like if I wait until the end of the day to do my workout, it's not as, it's not as fun. <laughs> I'm trying to make it fun. But at the end of the day, sometimes you just want to like read a book or zone out or make a really elaborate meal or whatever. Like however you like relax after a long work day, that's on you, bud. But like for me, like if I wake up, I feel like my brain isn't quite turned on yet to finish that workout. You know, like I can just do it in comparison to if I think about it all day and like opt out of it in the evening. I'm like, Oh, like I'll do that later or I'll do it tomorrow. Like it's so much easier for me to talk myself out of it. If it's an afternoon workout in comparison to like a morning workout, but I've been struggling so hard with actually waking up. So it's been extremely difficult to like get myself to go. So, I have been trying for the month of October. I've been doing Power Life. Um, it's been really good. I gave you guys an update last week. It's still going great. So Monday and Wednesday, I'm taking like afternoon classes, but Friday morning, I'm doing my, my morning class. It's so fun, so good. Um, and I hate, like I hate it. Today, I went for a Psycho Bar workout and 
I was just thinking to myself, oh my gosh, like I don't want to go. It was a mid morning workout. So like my brain was turned on. It wanted to talk me out of it. And I'm like, Ugh, like it's so difficult. But my friend had invited me. She's like, hey, like, do you want to go? And I was like, yes, like I hadn't seen her for so long. I was like, absolutely. So I went and I hated it. And I just remember thinking throughout the class, I'm so tired. It wasn't that it was cycle bar. I, I love cycling. I think that's so fun. I love the music. But it was just like, oh, it's Saturday. Like, I want to sleep in. I hadn't slept the best um, the night before. And I was just like making excuse after excuse because I knew it would be hard work, right? Like, a workout is a hard, a hard work. And I was like, it's good for you. And I went and I didn't regret it. Like you don't regret a workout that you did because it still gave value to you. But I just like throughout the class was like, okay, it's only 10 minutes in. Okay, it's 15 minutes in. Okay, I only have 15 minutes left. I only have 10 minutes left. I only have two songs left. <laughs> like I kept saying this in my head because it was brutal and I was pushing through and I was like, this is so good for your cardiovascular health. This is so good for your heart. This is so good for your body. Like you're doing a great job. And afterwards I like got in my truck and I was like, that sucked. <laughs> like I'm so bad, not mad, just like tired. It tired me out. And I was like, you know what? Like it was still so good for you. So, um, part of my job that I'm doing now, I'm working from home. I work with a lot of individuals who are elderly and who have lost function in parts of their body or if they have a disability. Like I work with a lot of people um, that aren't able to do things for themselves. And I, it just like puts it in perspective for me on how I should be grateful for the body that I have um, that I was born with two legs, two arms, both hands, like born with all my limbs and grateful that I've not lost any like um, mobility. And the older you get, the more your body starts to break down. That's life. And as I talk to these individuals every single day um, and talk about like what they're struggling with, for or the doctor's appointments that they have. I was not really sure like why I've been led to like this part in my life and um, with like my career, my motivation, like all the things that I want to achieve and do. And I was like, it doesn't matter like your, the reasoning. It's like what you make the reason to be. So as I'm like, thinking about this, it's really telling me that this, these are life lessons. Like just like you can read from a book and learn what that person went through, um, to achieve what they did or like what they worked on or whatever, like talking to individuals who are in their, you know, last 20, 10, whatever years of their life, like that's also such a good resource to talking with people and like their regrets are not taking care of their body, not, you know, going to the gym or, or keeping up with their flexibility or their mobility. Um, and, or like if they drink a lot or if they smoked all their life or any of these like little things, I'm like, this is the time that you're taking care of yourself. This is the time that you need to be putting in those habits, those eating habits, those physical habits, as much as it sucks, because it literally does. Like shopping for all the things, like you have to go, you have to plan your meal, you have to go grocery shopping, pick it up, put it away, make sure that your fruits, your vegetables, whatever, it doesn't like go bad. You have to like meal prep, you have to prepare, like, it's a lot of work. You have to go to the gym. You have to like be consistent. You like that is difficult. If, if it's not a habit for you, if it's not like something that you have done ever since you were a little girl, I did not necessarily have, like we were always active, but like our family didn't go to the gym together. That wasn't something we did. So like, 
while we played outside and did all those things, now as like an adult who sits in front of my desk, like I have to be so good about like getting my steps in. Like I'm walking nine to 10 every single day on my walking pad. I have been going outside actually because the weather has been so good, but just like getting your steps in, going to the gym, preparing healthy meals, avoiding processed foods like just trying so hard to preserve and just like focus on me because i love baking and i love canning and jams and i like doing all of those things so i have to be even more careful <laughs> to make sure that i'm not overdoing it in an area i still want to bake pumpkin roll or uh, snickerdoodles. I just made snickerdoodles. Do all those things, but also balance it out with carrot soup that has like turmeric and pepper in it, or making meals that are like nutritious and are going to like give me a good foundation. Prioritizing protein, like that's really good for your body, really good for your brain, really good for your hormones, like all the things. So I'm like, I am in a transitional season in my life. I'm doing things that like I didn't envision myself doing. They always say like when you're growing up, what do you want to be when you grow up? What do you want to do? Like who do you want to be? And I remember a teacher telling me, you know what, like it's great that you have an idea of what you want to do, but some of your jobs haven't even been created yet. Like you might be doing something that hasn't even been invented yet, but is gonna be so vital. And I just remember thinking, yeah, whatever, I'm gonna like do the same thing. Like I have this vision, I have this goal and how like my idea has changed and morphed into something different. Um, but it also goes to show like you might not know what path you're gonna be taking with the options that have been presented and that's kind of how I feel right now like I didn't ever envision this for myself but this is where I'm at and I was trying to think on like why like why am I in this stage of life why why am I doing something that's a little different than what I went to college for like why am I like doing these things and I really think that it is for me to take account for how blessed I am with the body that I have and to just accept it, but also like start building that foundation for longevity and like taking care of yourself. So health and fitness will always be a goal that I have, but I really want to focus on hammering in those like habits or those daily routines that are going into it. And I know it's the hardest when you start, so that's why I'm complaining so much because I feel like it's so hard. Um, but I know it's going to help me in the most because if I'm not healthy, if I'm not taking care of myself, I'm not gonna be able to achieve, achieve in the other areas that I want to because your health and being able to do things and your mobility, that is your foundation. Like that is how you're going to continue and work on all your other goals. Um, and I also think that's pretty cool. Like your health is the only thing that you can't really, like you can't purchase. And what I mean by this, I don't mean like the supplements or the food, like you can purchase those things, but you can't purchase a healthy body. Like you can't purchase abs, like true abs, or you can't purchase like cardiovascular health. You have to put in effort. You actually have to do the thing. So it's kind of like a, um, like um, something to brag about, like, cause you can't purchase it. Like you have to put in the hard work. And if you see a fit person or someone who eats healthier has those really good habits, you know that they also have the discipline. So I always like hold those people in higher regard because I'm like, oh my gosh, like they had to work so hard and be so disciplined and fit it in their schedules. So I'm gonna do that for myself. I wanna put my first myself first and focus on these areas um, that I really didn't think about growing up. My second one is my personal and business growth. So with the holidays rolling around, it is so easy to take a snooze and be like, oh, like I'll do that later, or I'm gonna lay on the couch and watch Harry Potter, like movie marathon. Like I like doing that too, okay? And there's a time and a place for all of this. But 
I do not want to get in this like slumped routine of not working on my goals. That's why, like I talked about in my peak, where I list the three things or four things that I want to do for the day and I keep myself accountable with those things because it's so easy to have lower energy in the winter. Shorter days, you're staying in more, you can't go outside as much. And I really do think that it has an impact on like my overall ability to achieve, get things done, do all the things. So I have placed myself and strategic areas. Um, I have benchmarks. So I've been journaling every night. I've thought about my intentions, what I want to do um, in the next three months and the next, well, I guess we're, we're at the end of October. So thinking about what I want to be doing uh, for the end of October into November and December and really like giving myself mile markers on, okay, where did I think that I was going to be? Where am I now? Like, how is that all playing a part? and like my big picture goal. And I also think that like having these little benchmarks, it's going to keep me better on track, but also allow me to readjust if I have not like, you know, met the mark. I have also purchased like a couple books that I want to read. I think like reading books or listening to Audible has been so important for like my motivation. I don't know. Right now, I'm listening to Mel Robbins on Audible for like coaching session. And after listening to Mel like counsel individuals, I'm like, yes, like we got this, we're gonna do it. Or I've been listening to um, motivational podcasts about like routine or like them working on their goals or their businesses. And I really like listening to people about any business, like it doesn't necessarily have to be like my business, but listening to someone who's like in real estate or listening to someone who like has a supplement com company or like all the things. I just like listening to how they did it and what they like focused on. So I think it's really interesting. That's one of my, you know, favorite pastimes. But I've also picked up a couple books and I am like actually reading books. So one of the books that I just got in the mail, I'm so excited, it is Nicole Wather's Nothing Is Missing. I first listened to her episode on The Skinny Confidential two years ago, I think. And um, she just like launched her book and I listened to her second episode on the Skinny Confidential and it was so, so good. And I had already pre-ordered the book. Like, um, I, I follow her on social media. I got to watch her speak at a live event. So I really like Nicole Walters, but I, I ordered her book and I've started reading it. I'm in chapter three and it has just like put so many things in perspective too, because I think listening to someone else's story and how they struggled and what they overcome, it kind of gives you a reality check for what you've been doing and where your focuses have lied and what you might have had as a roadblock that really isn't a roadblock at all. It's just like something that you decided to focus on because you're scared or you're having some sort of like imposter syndrome. So you're like, oh, like I can't get through it. Like this, I have this block or this barrier in my way. Um, when reality, like how other people have had it and like how they have like pushed through, it just gives me inspiration to, all right, like, is this made up stress? Like, are we just like pretending this is a big issue because we don't want to put forth the effort. We don't want to put the work in. So reading her book has been so good. Um, I, I mean, it, she's such a storyteller. It's easy to like get just like wrapped up in her and her book. Um, I also have a couple other books that I have uh, purchased, they're ordered, so I know like actually putting it in my night routine and like pulling out my book and reading before bed. Sometimes it's like bad though because I get like so much inspiration, I'm like yes and yes and, and then I don't want to go to sleep because I'm like this is the opposite, this actually like motivated me and now I want to like work on my goals and like kick some butt. So. Uh, that, that's like a downside of it but sometimes I'm like all right like let's write this down see we write this down in our book there has been a couple nights where I like left the bed to come to my office and I write down like oh I need to work on this I was inspired by you know reading this book or listening to this audible 
as I fold in laundry before bed, I'm like, I'm going to work on this tomorrow. And then it allows my, my brain to relax because I'm like, we're going to get to that tomorrow. You don't have to worry. You don't have to stress. Like we're going to get to it tomorrow. So that has been also like, I told you, like planning your day is, um, just super, super good. So I've mapped out the books. I have the audibles. Um, I also like am in a course right now. So it's a 12 week course. So it's going to finish out like around Thanksgiving, but like a lot of the people that I've met, um, through this course, it, it's like, um, a personal growth, like motivational, um, course that I've been taking. And so like the other people in the course are also like motivated to achieve like the things that they want to achieve. So I know that I will be able to like bounce ideas off of them and like continue, um, with like my goals for, for the season before the new year starts. So that's also like a little bit of accountability. Like I'm, networking with people who also have goals and truly the people you surround yourself with is so important like if you have these big goals or you're inspired by someone you listen to a podcast or you watch a movie and you're like i want to do that like i want to follow my dream i want to have my passion like i remember watching carrie underwood like this uh, i think it was last december and i was so inspired because she just had so much passion on stage and i was like i want to be passionate like i want to love my career and chase after it right but in that environment that i had in december and january and february last year was negative and so i felt like my dreams were out of reach because the people I was surrounded with were like, ah, life sucks. Like I don't have enough time in my day. I'm so stressed. Like, and that was like negative energy that brought me down and made me feel like my dreams were too big and out of reach and not achievable. But then I started surrounding myself with people who have achieved the things that I want to achieve and are working towards their goal. And they're like, that's achievable. Like you can do that. Actually, that's too small of a goal. You should be thinking bigger. You should be like actually chasing after this. And that has been so inspiring and empowering because I'm like, oh my gosh, like actually I've like, I can do it. So the people you surround yourself with is so important. And I've finally like pivoted myself in a way that like, okay, everyone surrounding me is going to help me, um, with my goals and they're going to help encourage me and they're not going to like pull me down. They're going to, you know, help me along. So that is like my personal and business growth. Like, I feel like I'm supporting it in a way that is easily accomplishable. So that's going to be my focus for the end of the year. So then like come January, I'm going to be set up for bigger success and I can be focusing on maybe like phase two instead of the beginning stages of my own, um, you know, my own growth. My third one is curation of my home. I spent a lot of time at home. I work from home now. So not only am I home all day, <laughs> but I, it's not even like the decoration. I want to be as productive as possible in that area of my house, whether that is my living room to be cozy so that I can focus on the TV, right? Like that's being productive or efficient in that area. Like when it's movie time, I'm in the movie. I'm watching the movie. We are doing all the things with the movie in comparison to, all right, like if I fold laundry in my living room, I'm then going to be thinking, oh, I should be folding the laundry. Or like if it's not set up to be cozy, like if I have stuff all over the couch, then I'm not going to be able to focus on the movie. So I want to be effective in each area. I want it curated. I want that area to be exactly for that thing. So my kitchen, I don't want to have stacked notebooks that should be in my office. I don't want it to be messy and have no flow. Like I want to be able to put my dishes away and like not have stuff stacked on the counter. I want it in a way that is going to be streamlined. So when I wake up, my coffee stuff is all in the same area. I'm going to be able to get my coffee and it's not like, oh, I have to get my coffee from the pantry 
And then my milk frother is in this drawer over here. And then I have to get like my milk out of the fridge that's over there. And it's like too much movement. So instead, I have my cups in one cupboard right next to my coffee, right next to the fridge. So it's like seamline. It's streamlined. It's seamless. So I'm just able to grab it and I'm able to go. And it's not like this big ordeal. My bathroom. I wanted to have like my stuff. Um, one thing that I've done is like my skincare. I used to like I have this like pretty little decorative area for my skincare. I have it in this tray. I have a little fake plant next to it. It's very aesthetic. It's very like pleasing to the eye. But one thing that I didn't have is I had all my bottles like kind of in a, like mixed up. What I've done is I put my skincare in the line that it is to be done. So it still looks like artfully arranged, but I have my vitamin C serum on the left hand side. So I'm picking the vitamin C serum up. And then my second one is my hyaluronic acid because after I put my vitamin C, I'm putting my hyaluronic acid. So it's right next to it. It's second in the line. And then third, I'm going to put my niacinamide, which is a like brightening and glowy thing. So I put that on third. And it goes like that in a row on the things that I put on my face. Instead of like trying to pull or look for the vitamin C and then look for the hyaluronic acid. Oh shoot, I actually grabbed the nice in mind because they look exactly the same. Like no, it's seamless. So I have less decision fatigue because honestly, like I, I've had low energy lately. Like the energy that I have needs to be like allotted for the things that are actually going to push me forward and my goals. I cannot be like having decision fatigue on what am I going to wear or where is my vitamin C or what order should I put them in today or where is my coffee or should I have chai tea? No, it's all streamlined and I just want to make areas even better. I want my office stuff to be organized. I want my bedroom stuff to like help with my nighttime routine. I want it all to like just flow and be really just like a an area where I can either relax or be productive or the in-between, right? Like whatever that area is for, I want to just be doing that thing and I don't want to have like this split diluted focus. I want to focus on the things that I'm trying to achieve and I know that if I get my house in a working order and I have everything in its own flow, come January, I don't have to worry about it anymore because it's a habit. It's a routine. My health and fitness, like it's going to be a habit. It's going to be a routine. And then I don't have to worry about those things anymore. And come January, I can just focus on my personal and business growth or another goal that I have or another, you know, thing that I want to just focus some time on so then I can get it, you know, in my routine or I can like bust past it, um, and focus on the next thing and the next thing, like that is how you have your building blocks. That's how you get better at things is when you try and you try and you try and you try and you just give it focus for that one thing. And then you're able to add on to it. So like if I tried to do all the things that I'm doing now with my podcast that I like would have put on myself when I first started my podcast, I would have got so burnt out because I didn't have the muscle.